Good day, and welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. If you're enjoying these series, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. The little button right in the corner of the screen makes it real easy. Help us build our community. So today we're going to be moving ahead with uh, our part three of our Amazon 20 Amp Bariac review. Hopefully it's a short one here. Um, Again, this only covers this particular 20 amp 2000 VA model. There are other smaller ones out there that maybe have the same wiring issues. I don't know. You would have to check them out. Um, but again, it only covers this one particular unit. So um, here we are. Uh, as I posted on my Facebook page, this is an unreasonable response to an unreasonable series of problems. So let's go through what I've done. Um, I went through what I found in uh, the part two of this here and the deficiencies I found and part one showed a pretty bad test pattern for it. Um, so the very first thing we did was is we put a good heavy duty cord on it, 14 gauge, and it comes right up to a brand new strain relief. And the very first thing that the hot hits is a new circuit breaker rather than that poor fuse holder that was heating and then from there it gets switched but let's just talk about the ground for a minute on our initial test this upper part of this case wasn't grounded I had detected ground on this panel with some resistance and I had detected a, a decent ground on the bottom so I'm going to throw up some pictures of how I cured that um, so my ground uh, lead from my cable goes to a hole drilled in the bottom of this box on the inside where I removed some paint, soldered on a, a loop lug, and uh, have a bolt coming through to tighten it down. And now I've got an, one ground that runs to these prongs here and another ground that runs to this kit hole case. And I used their same idea of sandwiching the ground in between the upper and the lower. But what I did was I removed some paint. And you'll see that clearly in the photos here in just a second. And uh, I removed the paint at every single screw point, both from the base section and from the upper section. And now this is affirmatively grounded as well as this is affirmatively grounded as well as the plug. So that looked after that. All of the other wiring I threw away. Um, some of it was 18 gauge. Some of it was 16 gauge. Some of it was poor quality. All of it was very poorly soldered with lead-free solder. So all of the wiring has been replaced and replaced with good solid 14 gauge copper. Um, we also showed how poorly things were soldered on the inside. To be able to get a nice heavy spade connector onto the back of the new 15 amp breaker and the switch wasn't much of a, a, a problem and they were soldered in heat trunk. Um, the tabs on these were a little bit light. So what I wound up doing was having wires run to, uh, again, female spade terminals, where I soldered the wires onto the spade terminals, and the spade terminals slipped onto the connectors. And I actually soldered the connector itself right onto the terminal of the plug for no resistance. So it's really been very brutalized for 15 amp service. It's properly wired to code now. Um, I I put on two voltmeters only because my old eyes, I can't read this. I mean, this is still wired in. It only shows inbound line voltage now. It doesn't show anything else. And I'm probably never going to look at it other than to see if the light burns out, whether it's off or on. So on this side here, I have an input voltage. This will show me what my line voltage is. And this one will show me what my transformed or my uh, chosen output voltage is. So let's have a quick look at that here. Now I'm going to plug it in. My head's probably going to go in the way of the camera. And we'll just turn it on here. And here you can see the gauges come to life. And you can see my problem. My line voltage is off in 124 to 126, which creates a problem for me. Uh, they put in new boost buck transformers a few years ago down the road from me. And it's since that time, it's my line voltage has been crazy. And now this is the output voltage that I 
and change this based on whatever I, I wish here, of course, variac. Um, but I mean, now I can do it with some modicum of ease. I can quickly see at a glance what my output voltage is. So these units are also wired in and they're on a separate 200, each of them is on a, their own 250 milliamp internal fuse. So they are in wired safe. There wasn't much I could do for safety for this meter. There just wasn't the space. Um, it's not very well protected. It's not a great meter. It's the only weakest link, but it's not going to affect the, the power handling capability or the current handling capability of the unit. So the next thing to really do is to use our old micro furnace, our trusty micro furnace, and put it through the same tests I did in the beginning, which is uh, I ran it for an hour on the 750 watt or just a little bit less than 7 amp setting and then run it for an hour on the high setting. Um, my results of that first test was it ran okay on the 7 amp setting, but I went up, up to high. I think it was 10 or 15 minutes in. And it was screaming for help. I had a significant heating around the fuse and switch area, and I had significant cord heating both coming and going. So I'm going to repeat that test. So at this point, I'll stop the video. I'll get that test done, and I'll come back, and I'll share my results. Okay, we're back with our results, which are much better than they were before. On the 750-watt setting, which is just under 7 amps, I detected no heating at all. On the uh, 1500 watt setting, which is on just under 15 amps, there was no cord heating, no front panel heating, no fuse holder or breaker heating, nothing around the switches. I had a very small amount of heat being dissipated by the auto transformer, which you would completely expect. So it made a big improvement um, to this unit. It's now capable of handling 15 amps. I think that the manufacturer's uh, um, rating of 20 amps or 200 VA was uh, far more than generous. And with the wiring inside it and the soldering, it certainly stepped into the realm of dangerous. Um, so, I mean, if you want to fix yours and you've got the skill, please go ahead, but do so at your own risk. Um, and we're going to be using this as part of our, uh, our test bench setup. We're going to be coupling this with our, uh, dim bulb tester, which we're going to create in the up and coming weeks. And, uh, um, we'll, uh, we'll go into some of the other uses, uh, here and I'll just, uh, I'll just show you one. Just listening to the CB band pounding in here today from down south. So this is a, a good example of uh, what a variac um, is really good for. Um, if I plug in this uh, receiver into my line at 124 volts, after a couple of hours op operation, this power transformer will be so hot you can't touch it. It's not really designed to run that way. Um, when I dial it back to 110 volts, and I come back in a couple of hours, it is warm. And the old um, the old boys always said that uh, after a couple of hours running, if you could put your hand on it uh, comfortably without getting a burn, um, your power transformer was running at the right temperature. So that's what this does. This is a saving a power transformer. If you enjoy listening to amateur radio or shortwave and you listen for a few hours every night, um, stepping your high line voltage down from 120 or more down to 110 or 105, this radio runs fine right down to 100, 100 volts without any loss of performance. So, you know, um, there's a big use just in saving your power transformer because, I mean, Part of this hobby is curation, is saving the old radios. And uh, if you could feed them the way they want to be fed, like if you look at them, a lot of them are rated at a maximum of 117 volts. And a lot of places were feeding in 122, 123, you know. It makes a significant uh, difference to the B-plus current that's happening and the demand and draw on the transformer and everything else. 
everything just runs so much happier when you can dial it down. So at this point, I'm going to end the series of videos. This unit was a disaster inside from the wiring perspective and some of the components they used. The actual auto transformer inside was of good quality, and I found that I could save it with a rewire. And of course, I've added on some uh, uh, fancy gauges to, to help me along. So uh, I guess in the end, it turned out to be a success because, I mean, uh, Sometimes, you know, one of our users pointed out uh, you can get a good deal on eBay on one of these things. It's a quality unit, and if you can, great. But if you can't find one, you can always buy one and repair it and understand you're going to have to put a little elbow grease into it and make it the way you want. And a couple of other our, our subscribers have said, oh, my goodness, I've good grief. I think one guy said, I've got that same one, and I'm going to crack it open and repair it. And Tim is waiting for me, my opinion, and now he knows uh, what I think of this unit. So like I said, I'm going to end this uh, um, piece here. Please take a time to subscribe if you like or enjoy the content. We've got lots of more great stuff coming. Don't be uh, shy to join our Facebook group. We've got a great bunch of people already forming over there. So we look forward to seeing you in the next one.